Today, I'm going to share five must-know advanced MOBA tips in Pokemon Unite that will take you to master. Let's go. Hey, yo guys, how's everyone doing? This is your guy, Assassin Dave. Welcome back to the Foreign Famous family again. Coming from an ex-pro MOBA player background, I actually found many MOBA mechanics to be working extremely well in Pokemon Unite. And I'm able to hit master with a bit over 100 games with barely any time invested. So I decided to start a series where I slowly reveal all the common MOBA mechanics that work extremely well in Pokemon Unite using simple, easy to understand words. Hopefully these tips will be helpful to your Pokemon gameplay as well. So make sure to watch till the end of the video. Tip number one. Do you know you can actually use the character icon on top of the screen to see whether your teammates have Unite move or not? When your teammates have Unite ready, the dot next to the circle will turn yellow. Otherwise, this dot will remain grayed out. It's very important for you to always pay attention to this, especially after 3 minutes into the game when the first Dreadnought spawns because Unite moves will drastically change the direction of that team fight. The team with Unites has a much better chance of winning fights since how strong Unite moves are in this game. You get insane amount of movement speed, buff, burst damage, or crawl control. I mean, just imagine a God of War with ultimate walking into a team fight compared to without. Knowing how many Unite moves your team has available, walking into a team fight will directly impact your decision making. If you saw your team only has one yellow dot on top and the enemy hasn't even used their unites yet, well it's probably not a good idea to dive in your enemy team for a full on 5v5. But instead, you guys should try to look for steals or trades on the opposite side of the map. Tip number 2. Do you know you can drastically increase your judgment call by panning around the map in the game? All you need to do is to hold down the L key and the right joystick while farming and walking to see around the map. This is crucially important in Pokemon Unite. In MOBA, there are usually three levels of new players, separated mainly by their abilities to collect information which should then decide the choices to take in the game. Entry level are the ones who never look at a minimap or don't even know that minimap exists. Their information are solely limited to the center of the screen and then there is a medium level of new players. In the medium level, players are familiar with the concept of minimap and have a general idea to look at it every now and then to find the locations of their teammates and enemies. And then there is the veteran level of new players. Some may ask, is that an oxymoron to call new players veteran? Well, no, let me explain. Since most new players are categorized based on their abilities to collect information only, veteran level of new players is simply referring to those who not only use minimap, but now able to actively use the controls to pan their center of attention to other areas on the map to collect a lot more information beyond what minimap can provide. But to be not called a new mobile player, there are a lot more deaths involved, such as decision making after collecting sufficient amount of information, proper execution of an objective, shot calls and rotations, so on. And it might sound overwhelming at first, but don't worry, we will be covering all of this in depth in future videos. So make sure to drop that like and subscribe and turn the bell on to all notification bells. Now, why is it a must to learn and get yourself comfortable with if you want to improve in Pokemon Unite? Well, panning the map can tell you a lot more than what's seen on the minimap, such as whether enemy team use their Unites or not. This will help you make better decisions walking into a team fight. If you join late into a team fight and you saw enemy already used all their Unites by panning the map, it will give you a lot more confidence walking into multiple enemies. Another good example of panning the map is to check on the remaining HP of objective such as Rotom and Dreadnought. So let's say you just finished Dreadnought, but enemy has many members missing on the map. You can easily pan the map to top side and see whether your team can still make it to contest for Tom. If it seems too late to try, you can just send a few people top to defend instead of moving up as 5 and wasting precious time farming or pushing bottom side instead. Before we continue guys, I know more than half of y'all beautiful sex people watching have yet to join the coolest greatest abandoned family in the world of Pokemon Unite. If you enjoy the content, make sure to smash the like and subscribe and turn the bell on to all notification bells for the YouTube algorithm. I upload videos on a daily basis to keep you guys entertained and informed. And make sure to join me on my daily live stream on Trouble with a link in description to see some global master jungle ranking action. I will be drawing lucky winners to send $10 Nintendo gift cards every week on my Trouble live stream. With that, let's get 
get back into today's video. Tip number three, make sure to always let your teammates with the most Pokeball score. Well, this is not entirely true and let me explain. In Pokemon Unite, the game only lasts for 10 minutes and your main objective is to score the most amount of balls within that 10 minutes limitation. So it's crucially important to make the most of every enemy hoop to give your team the best chance of winning. With that being said, let's say one outer hoop only has 20 points left to score. You and your ally are approaching it to score now. Let's assume you have 21 points, but your ally has 50 points. Basically, whoever scores first between you two will eliminate that hoop since you both have more than 20 points to score. It's very important that you let your teammates score that 50 while you do your best to protect your teammates from any possible interruption. But let's imagine another scenario where the hoop still has 20 points left to score, but you only have 19 points and your teammate still has 50 points. It's important that you score your points before your teammate does because the hoop will remain standing even with one HP left to score and it will take in all the balls from the next score. By you scoring first, both of you can score in, thus stretch the benefit of that one hoop. Now, I hope this is not too much math, but if it is, just rewind and watch this section again because I don't know how else to explain it better. Tip number four, it's very important to memorize some major spawn timers in the game because this will give you a sense of purpose and direction while playing the game. For starters, there are four major objectives you need to be contesting as a team. Bees, Rotom, Dreadnought, and Zapdos. The first wave of bees spawned at 8.50 seconds on the clock. This is the major objective since the side who takes the bees will usually have 1 to 2 levels up their opponents, which is a huge advantage moving further into the game. And the second wave of bees spawns at 7.20 on the clock, 20 seconds before the first spawn of Rotan and Dreadnought. Again, the side who wins the bees will usually gain themselves the advantage walking to the first Dreadnought fight. Now that we mentioned Dreadnought and Rotom, yes, their first spawn comes at 7 minutes on the clock. It's very important for at least one top laner to be rotating down around 7.20 or 7.30 on the clock to help contest the first Dreadnought. Dreadnought is probably the most important objective on the map since it offers your entire team so much level advantage going forward, which results in more members activating their Unite move, which can then change the direction of any following team fight as we pointed out earlier. Another thing worth pointing out about Dreadnought and Rotoms are they spawn every two minutes, which means you need to plan your visit to these objectives accordingly to help your team secure the better chance of snowball and turn the snowball into insurmountable advantage as Zepto's fight. Which leads us to talk about Zepto's spawn timer. Zepto's spawn at 2 minutes on the clock. The team who secures Zapdos usually certainly wins the game. No matter how behind they are, the instant 500 points simply change the game too much. I'm not sure why Zapdos is not nerfed somehow, since your entire team can secure 3 Dreadnought, 3 Rotom throughout the game, but if you somehow lose Zapdos, and the fact that you will still lose the game just doesn't make any sense to me. But that's beyond the topic of today's video. Today, I just want to tell you that understanding when Zapdos spawn is so instrumental to winning your games that you need to plan everything around it. Tip number five. Do you know for many jungle Pokemon choices, you can actually use Eject to jump over the wall at the beginning of the game, and you will almost have your Eject ready again by the time you finish your first jungle clear. Since most battle items are 55 seconds and shorter, you can always activate them at the start to speed up your jungle clear a bit more, and by the time you finish your first jungle clear and head to lane, your battle item will most likely be ready to use again. And that will be all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to drop a like, subscribe and turn the bell on to all notification bells again for the YouTube algorithm. Love you guys and Assassin Dave signing off. See you guys next time on our regular live stream on Trouble. Remember to come follow me for giveaways and NA best jungle gameplay. Let's go. Just for the thrill of it, nothing